All right. Good day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live Fuel show here in 2022. I'm pumped, ladies and gentlemen. I had a great podcast last night. I recorded too. I, 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 anybody who's been following the show for a few years, I get excited just talking to people. Maybe I just need to get out more, even though I do that too. But podcasting is a different domain for me. And once again, after all these years, I get to break somebody's virginity in podcasting once again today. You'll be coming on with a new uh, new guest co-host, and he's a local to me here in the Lehigh Valley, greater Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, which to be fun with, for you, ladies and gentlemen, who've followed the show for a long time. That's how the show started. I would sit down live, and we've done shows in Starbucks. We've done shows at uh, co-working spaces. It's been fun. So uh, part of that local appeal, anybody who loves business, and obviously we, we talk about health, business, and lifestyle on this show. He's a geek about business. He's got some projects going on here. He's got a local verse, if you will, uh, which is actually his brand uh, that is coming to a greater Lehigh Valley near you, which is already being put into place, put into action. The hustle is upon him. Uh, but this gentleman is helping to create not just local verse. It's not just a company. It's a mission. Okay. And he's aiming for those local business ownerships, right. To build that connectivity, build that network, right. Let's swarm the planet with this concept. But I've said in the past shows before, right. Sometimes you got to grow locally before you can grow globally. Okay. But his vision though, is like everyone powerful, right. Bringing people together. Listen, we got a lot more to talk about. He's got a lot more to give you the bio behind the scenes without further ado, our guest host today, Marino Hernandez, sir. Welcome to podcasting. Uh, thank you, Scott. Thank you. I mean, really glad to have uh, my virginity broken on this, especially on your show. <laughs> like, you're a great guy. I love being here. Yeah. Well, and I want to let me give him a shout out and also Jason from behind the scenes. Marino didn't mess around, man. Like, he's like, dude, I, I, I got to get into a studio. Uh, I've not had a lot of people like literally go track down somebody in their local network and say, dude, can I borrow your studio? So when you guys watch this on Facebook video and YouTube video, um, there's actually a sweet backdrop. I was just giving them props, right? Because I'm, I'm a geek about acoustic panels now off these years. I've done some redesign of mine. He's got some cool backdrops. Plus there's like, I can see at least in the webcam view alone, six or seven guitars. It, it's a cool background. So Marino, you're in a good environment, man. Jason's hooking you up. Yeah. And what I loved is it's local. And uh, so it goes with the theme, you, you, you know, I mean, I love, and I actually, you know, I'm renting the space, like, uh, but I've known Jason before, and yeah. it's great. He's uh, he's setting up in the basement of a church right now. Like Love that's that. Where he has he moved his studio away from his um, from his home where he had it before, and he's like about state of the art quality, everything, and uh, and I love that. Too. Well, if he's into music, I can see that being definitely a concern. Most people go the audio geek route for music, let then. Then there's the podcasting world, which is me now gone a geeking route. And like, like literally behind me, these wooden panels, they're all around this room now. You can't see off to my left here, but these are all acoustic rated uh, foam panels. But I, I found a guy overseas. I couldn't find somebody local to do this amazing cut work on the wood like this. And I was like, all right, well, they're on Etsy. And then I found out later, <laughs> the guy is literally based in, oh, that, that little war going on overseas right now. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So I actually got to support a small business hustler in a war-torn country, but before the war started, obviously. Um, so I did reach out to him just to make sure, hope he's okay, and, and thank him for the quality work. Obviously, I would prefer to do this locally, right? That's why you and I are chatting today. And again, shout out to Jason. Man. It, by the way, does Jason have a brand? Can we give him a shout out? Yes, Free, uh, Freestone Music. I'm not, I think that's not an entire name, but you'll find it. If cool. You, um, if Freestone you Music? Yes. All right. And is he also bet? Right, so, in because again, anybody who's local listen to this, we understand the Greater Lehigh Valley. Uh, the old airport code here, ABE, Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton. I am now based in Allentown. I used to live in downtown Bethlehem. I used to bounce at a bar many years ago in downtown Easton. Uh, where, where are you guys based at right now? Bethlehem. Right okay. Next to Southside Bethlehem, almost. Cool. And uh, I'm Googling this now, by the way. Freestone Productions. Oh, okay. That's it. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> I knew it was uh, one one of the other. Yeah. Well, I, I like it. So again, love giving shout outs to uh, small businesses, especially ones that are helping you out. And actually just for fun, because I have the power and I have multiple monitors here. Would this be your buddy? Yeah. On the screen share? That's there Jason. You go. 
So ladies and gentlemen, freestoneproductions.com. This might, oh, he's got a lot of cool stuff in the background. See, now I got to play around on his website later and see what he's got going on. See, you just hooked me up with something else I get to geek out on. So again, yeah, definitely proudly supporting the Lehigh Valley and surrounding music scene, ladies and gentlemen, since 2012. So there's another little plug. Anyway, back to you, man. All right. Why are we hanging out today, right? You and I connected. God, is it, has it been two months at least? Oh, yeah. And I got the COVID. And yeah. Like, like I we've all been there. Before. Got it at some point. You finally <laughs> did at the wrong time. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I got it back in the beginning and, and then like, uh, it's just been funny. It's, it's been wild. So, and I'm, I'm glad you're still here. Glad you're healthy. Um, oh yeah. I'm, I'm real glad. Uh, cool. It wasn't that bad. So when I went, they said it was uh, not as severe as it used to be, you know, like yeah. uh, people aren't dying as much, I guess. Anymore. You had the more flu like symptoms with the current strain. Yeah, and only for a little bit. It wasn't even exactly flu. I was like at work. I felt run down, and uh, and I just like slept even there because we have the chance to like nice. um, on road cases because we do uh, preparing for concerts. Cool. So I called everybody. I'm like, yo, um, I had COVID, so just please be careful. But nobody got it for me. Thanks. Nice. Fully. Yeah, a buddy of mine just got it last week. I, I a colleague through the uh, HVAC industry that I heavily influence for many years now and uh very professional guy con contractor everything else he's been again this guy's in and out of people's homes businesses like daily and he never got as far as he could tell a strain until just recently same thing he had low energy low, low energy he was kind of knocked down about 48 72 hours and then by the end of the first week he was back to normal so he was lucky too but so anyway asked. local verse let's talk yes. local All verse right. Okay, yes, let's talk. I could talk about this forever. I know you are very passionate. We've had a few conversations already. You and you got your it, the cool thing is like so so uh you and I are in this private little mastermind group now and it's very new. They're still kind of like birthing it. So like you're an early adopter like I am with uh Justin Shank. Shout out to him. I I uh found out about the him launching this at the based in Reading, Pennsylvania. So again, it's not Lehigh Valley, right? But it's Pennsylvania, right? It's okay, maybe an hour and a half away. Uh, he's same passion as you, right? Supporting local businesses. He wanted to host a conference locally in Pennsylvania instead of all these entrepreneurial things that are, okay, you got to go to Texas. Like I was in Austin, Texas last week. Uh, the last event I went to pre-COVID was in California. And I was like, why can't Pennsylvania just have an entrepreneurial growth event? For gosh sakes. And absolutely. You know? <laughs> yes. I totally agree. Like, like anything. I, I'm the Lee Bell is booming, isn't it, Marino? Are aren't we kind of booming? Yes. I mean, I even had like a thought of like uh why people go to Silicon Valley. Why can't we have our own like uh from steel to silicon, you know, right? like uh or even fiber. <laughs> yeah, and for people, because we have listeners in other countries, right? Australia, UK. I look at the stats. Uh, so shout out to our international listeners, and and you can relate to this conversation, right? Because what we're talking about here today, as this show continues, is what if this could be happening and growing in your own neck of the woods, your own time zone, your own country, your own town, village, whatever you want, whatever you guys call it in your countries. Uh, the point here is like getting connected, right? That whole growing locally before you grow globally, um, and there's no excuse for physical brick and mortar versus online businesses. I mean, there's no reason why, I mean, I'm an online consultant. I, I don't have a physical brick and mortar. I don't need it. Why pay the overhead? But I am local. So it just so happens that most of my clients are in other states of this country. And actually there's one I met in Texas last week. He's an Australian. He wants to hire me. I'm like, well, that'll be a new one. I don't know. I was like, I told him I got a waiting list. <laughs> so anyway, back to you, ma'am. Wow. Growing locally, right? Building the yeah. local verse. So, Where did the branding originate from? Because I'll geek out about branding, right? I love to talk about marketing. So Okay, so let me, uh, the, it went through several name changes. It started as Kilowit, which is, uh, you know, like a kilowatt, but like yeah. WIT on the end. Uh, okay. Like it's about like, you know, what if a thousand minds got together and um, and brainstormed, you know, like uh, solutions and, and inventions, projects, you know? Mm -hmm. So then uh, it became then market ply you know like uh multiply the market the yeah. idea was like you uh create an invention you could just uh and people could kind of upvote it and if you know that creates demand and that gives an incentive for entrepreneurs to join in for stores to sell it you know uh, and then it became open plex and people plex and then uh one day i 
like local verse. And that's when, when I thought of that, that's exactly what I was looking for. Something that's near and far, you know, local and widespread. Sure. Right? The important thing is that it feels local, but at the same time, it's something that spreads everywhere. Like, so the company itself, when it reaches a certain size, will split like an, ame an, like an amoeba and it'll, you know, become its own. It, it, it'll become two independent companies with identical core principles. Sure. That's You're carrying idea. the same missions and values across. Yes. And that, ha and that obviously this is, this is something that this is essential, right? Like you, ha this has to be as these things split off or, and, or potentially grow down the road. This is something that you're going to obviously ensure stays consistent across the platform, right? Yes, but not me, but the, the, the fans, people, the people the are going to be in charge of the core principles. Like it, that was early on. I knew I had to do that because there was a lot of disappointments with other companies that you know betray their core principles at some point mm -hmm. say they're growing larger they don't need this anymore and i'm like all right this cannot happen to local verse and uh so the it's it's interesting let's pause on that that that's a very very important thing that you're already realizing and I've watched it. I've experienced it. Now, I've worked with some big companies over the years. Everybody knows what T-Mobile is. That's a big cellular outfit besides here in the U.S. In the USA. Um, back in the day when I worked for that company, well, back in the day, the local company founded here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Do you remember the old cell phone company? No. It was a I'm company not. called OmniPoint. So OmniPoint was a Bethlehem-founded company, cell phone company. And then on the West Coast, there was a company called Western Wireless. And then those companies eventually bought each other out, merged, whatever, while I was with them. Then became uh, – they, they carried on the Western Wireless for a little bit, and then they became Voice Stream. And then Voice Stream eventually got bought by Deutsche Telekom's T-Mobile entity out of Germany, and they created T-Mobile USA. So it's a very interesting fast-forwarding of a timeline, but this is like – we're talking, uh, I was back in 99, 2000, up until I think I left that company back in 2006. So now, again, small, got big, got, you know, I mean, that brand, T-Mobile USA, has not fallen away. It's now one of the major players, right? You have AT&T, you got, uh, well, it used to be singular, went back to AT&T, right? You got them, and you got a, few, a couple of others. But those are the powerhouses now. Uh, but I will tell you, OmniPoint didn't have a, a strong baseline of missions values something for people to really get behind and believe in but it was a good it was a good company western wireless was a little bit better voice stream when they did that they did really start working on that but i got to give props t-mobile really implemented some powerful consistent messaging across the company so even though i'm not a big corporate fan anymore uh i still give them a shout out. I appreciate that because look how big they've gotten, how much they've scaled. Their branding is all over the world. Um, but one thing I was always impressed by that company was keeping their missions and values consistent. Now, my clients, that's another thing like you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. These businesses start getting big and they forget about where they came from. Like yes. what, what built the, what put the foundation in place? And now, is this something that frustrates you? Why, why did it become something of a key focal point for you? Oh, absolutely frustrates me. Um, and because, but, you know, more than frustrating, I'm more interested. I'm more interested in uh, my priorities to find what's the mechanism, why. It's not just that big company's bad. Like, mm -hmm. uh, that's not true because, sure, you right. know, but there is a tendency there and 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 it exists. but. But there's always a mechanism. There's always a reason. And you could find, and what I believe I found it, and I call it, my name for it is mess production. Like uh, it's the part of mass production that just makes a mess of everything. Like, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. And so with the mechanism is, I could, if I compare it like to a local business, um, let's say they had they found a problem. It's making people sick, or it's harming people in some way. And maybe it's not even making them sick, but they know it's it could harm people. And let's say it's cost them five cents to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they're like, okay, yeah, we gotta get rid of this. I mean, we'll we'll eat the five cents. So when you take a multinational company doing the same decision, now 
we're talking, you know, th- those five cents adds up to like millions, maybe even hundreds of millions. Sure. And uh, now the decision is like, you know, and we've seen companies do this. Well, you know, screw it. You know, if people get sick, uh, they could sue us and we'll still make more profit. Then, uh, there is a, uh, I mean, and that's, I mean, just where you're kind of going with that, I can, I'll keep it going. The medical versus just that whole sector, it's a hot mess. I have, I'm connected with a lot of influencers in that world and the pharmaceutical world too. And yes, they've created some good things, but there's also a lot of bad there. And yes, man, if they're not making money, then something's going to get cut, something's going to get thrown out. And it's like, well, Where's that balance, right? There's profitability to ensure scalability and growth, but there's also back to your point, right? What is like? Do you still love doing what you do? Like, is it is it rotting your employees' hearts like while they're do, going through these negative uh, decision making processes? Where, again, let's get back to your roots, right? You're trying to help people, right? Isn't that the whole point of healthcare or supplementation companies, nutrition companies, etc.? It's like, yes, you want to make money so you can scale and grow. But don't forget about the end user, the consumer. And to your point, it doesn't matter if it's a local Lehigh Valley business or somebody who has grown to a statewide or, or countrywide or even international exposed uh, uh, product or service growth company. Don't forget your roots. Uh, so I, I love that's an important value for you. Well, I think it really comes, it depends on the person. I mean, a lot of people do enter. I think most people enter with a, a business with a, mindset of helping you know um, people Mm -hmm. but there's also people with power trips and Mm -hmm. you know that um i would say that sociopaths do exist in the world you know and so and they're uh, oh yeah i studied psychology when i did my dual major in in school so yeah yeah. we can't forget that you know like and (laughs) it's real it's real like to be in business too like uh so my whole point though is that now you have you, there's an incentive that's um let's say um tempting you know like uh that's not there on a small scale on a smaller scale on a mm-hmm. local scale um also the reason to go open is because now everybody sees and it's a uh, more trustworthy you know you have a connection to your um to the people to the buyers sure. instead of um and they know you and if, and if you're local that's even better you know, like you're their neighbor, you're there, you're from the same, you know, you, you, you understand, they understand that this is coming from a source that's near to them, that they could explore. It's open sharing the knowledge. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of pluses that I believe are going to compete um, against the giants. Like uh, the, the, the giants cannot do what we're going to do. Oh, a word you just said was it's open, right? So immediately yes. my te- my techie brain, because I spent some time in the IT space, uh, I start thinking open source, right? Open source code, open source platforms. That's uh, the Unix and Linux world, not to geek out people, but anybody who understands that world understands that, right? Like I have friends of mine to this day, they're ISIT big shots, and they're all about that open source code, the freedom to create, the freedom to modify, the freedom to improve upon a system or a technology. Um, most of the geeky friends I got, they're all open source guys, but it's like, I I'm immediately ringing true in my head with what you're trying to create. And it's like, well, yeah, it's, it's to benefit everybody. Everybody can be a part of it. And back to your point, this is not supposed to be dependent on you. You're trying to just create a platform for everyone and then yes, everybody, the everybody keeps it going forward. So not to geek out a little bit more, right? So you ever hear of a SaaS solution in, in the technology space, S-A-A-S? Uh, sales as a service, I believe. Well, sales as a service is one way, or it's software as a service, right? Okay. Well, then there's pass. So in the IT space, there was a, a, so it's funny, local, right? IT company years ago I did consulting for was called INETU Managed Hosting, right down the street from the actual big T-Mobile complex, which is not even there anymore near the airport. Well, I was living right next door to the na- to my neighbor, and he was the founder. Well, big IT host, like, Companies put all your data in their servers. They had all these data centers, redundant cooling, redundant power. Your systems will never go down, yada, yada, yada. I left. Years later, I find out, flips the company, not just once, two times. He's multimillionaire now from right here in Allentown, Pennsylvania. The company's now changed names and stuff like that. All of his core original principles and everything else are gone. But it's like, there you go, right? A company that started from nothing. But while working for him, I learned what SaaS was. 
But then what I'm hearing from you is more like a pass solution, a platform as a service, right? A P-A-A-S. So yes. I just figured I'd geek out with you and throw some acronyms around because the world's <laughs> full of them. Let's have fun with them. <laughs> I, I, I just like acronyms. I'm, uh, we're going to try like not to use any. Like, oh, we can, uh, because, again, so spell it all out though, right? Platform exactly. as a service. Yeah. You're here to serve others and it's also here to serve back. It's a full circle service is what I'm hearing from you. And everybody has to work together to keep the services flowing and that ensures longevity and continuance. Well, I think the, the idea behind the business model is that it's, it's not that it's only inviting people into something that's like um, to do it as a service but because it's compelling mm -hmm. like uh i believe that there's it's going to be more faster and more profitable to be in business in this business model and that's going to naturally attract people then the early adapters before this profit's coming in that's who i want to attract with the with the service you know yeah, like you uh, want some I, early influencers to help yes. build that early momentum yeah people who who see the vision and the mission and believe in it. And that's why they join yeah. when they start profiting, then other people are going to start joining it because they're going to be looking at the way they've pulled out their hair, trying to figure stuff <laughs> out and do business versus, um, you know, hopefully it's a lot, a lot more smoother and uh, with commodity and commodity, like that's not, available when you're closed and isolated working on your business alone. You know, and, it, it, yeah, I like where you're going with that. If I could pause for a second on that, because the camaraderie piece, right. I've seen this time and time again, especially in our, uh, our little home of greater Lehigh Valley here, right. Which has continuously grown, especially during COVID, by the way. I mean, trust me, I've just bought a house, a new house last year and sold the old one. Trust me, the market's crazy. Uh, there's <laughs> lots of people coming here from Philly, New York City, everywhere else. Uh, the the uh, people in real estate are making a lot of money, uh, and I'm spending more than I wanted to. That that being said, <laughs> um, good times. Uh, but the the point of that is where I wanted to pause on that was just that camaraderie piece. Years ago, I've always been in the health and fitness space too. And I've always gotten a kick out of Lehigh Valley because before CrossFit became a branded thing and grew, because I, I was I'm, I'm heavily connected in that world too. There's now multiple CrossFit branded fitness facilities all over the Lehigh Valley. But before that, we had uh, local chains. There was a Lehigh Valley Racquetball and Fitness was a local chain. It had one like ten minutes from my house here in Allentown, which is now like a aging home that they're converting the whole facility into an aging home pop, uh, property. There was one right there in near Bethlehem, near uh, Moravian College. There was one in Easton. I think there was three or four campuses. They were like huge facilities, uh, but that whole brand's gone, right? They they didn't keep it going. They didn't keep hustling, right? They, they blamed uh, LA Fitness, a chain rolling in or these other, I'm like, no, no, no. I was like, <laughs> as a business consultant, I was like, dude, there is a strong percentage of the population here that were pissed off when those facilities closed. They didn't want to go to LA fitness. They didn't want to go to, I don't know, whatever that purple one is, the purple and yellow one. And I, I, I just call them all globo gyms. Now the point is, right. <laughs> it's like, I would have, if I was still going to a globo gym, I would have gone to one of those facilities. Like I'm big, I'm a big cyclist. A lot of my big cycling buddies all went to the one 10 minutes now from my house here. Like a lot of the road biking routes we do around the Lehigh Valley, like 50, 60 mile routes, we used to call them the gym ride and we'd go park in that parking lot. My buddy would come out from doing his regular workout, get the bike off of his car, my dentist, and boom, next, you know, we're doing a 30, 40 mile ride every, every like two, two nights a week. It was a local thing. He loved going to a local branded gym and that all that went away. It broke his heart. <laughs> he was so upset. And Absolutely. there's a perfect example there, right? Supporting local, the camaraderie, like, why didn't you reach out? Why didn't you, was there problems? Was there issues? Were you, were you trying to be too competitive to the point where you weren't working with other fellow health and fitness facilities? Because that's the biggest thing I observed years ago. I tried creating something called the Lehigh Valley Fitness Network. Uh, not to be confused with Lehigh Valley Health Network. That's a very big billion dollar health network. Uh, but I own the branding on Lehigh Valley Fitness Network. And you'll appreciate this. I tried to get all the health and fitness influencers in the greater Lehigh Valley to come together and network and share successes and opportunities for improvement, failures, et cetera. Nobody wanted to talk. 
there was no camaraderie. Nobody wanted there. Everybody thought, well, wait a minute. I can't tell him what's working for me because then they're going to copy me. I'm like, no, that's it, it seems to be a Lehigh Valley thing, but I've seen it in other other markets too. What are your thoughts on that? Because it's like nobody wanted to share. Everybody thought everybody was a competition. I'm like, if you're a yogi versus a Globo gym versus a CrossFit gym versus a TRX band thing, whatever you're doing, you're you all could be cross pollinating. Yes. And, yes. Right. Dude, like you could be the honeybees of the fitness world of the Lehigh Valley, right? Everybody's just going to buzz around each other and share best practices and send clients back and forth. Like, hey, I don't have yoga here. Great. Go, that's my that's my yoga go to. OK, <laughs> what are your thoughts on all this? Like this was this was this frustrated me. It was like 10, 15 years ago. OK, so we have parallel thinking there because cross pollinating is definitely a concept for uh, local verse. Um, we're just. I hear what you're saying. And the only thing to do is you could try to convince people, but you're really going to have to show people. And that's right. what local verse is going to do. Like, so when you said open source, I want you to imagine for a second, I will use your studio as an example. Mm -hmm. um, unless people can see this one too, I guess. Is it? Oh yeah. Screen? Both will be on. You'll have, we'll have okay. a screen. So yeah. So imagine You'll see both studios. <laughs> great. So imagine like the microphone I'm speaking on that it's set up the, imagine like there's like, um, what I call a wire clone, which is just like the outline of everything. And it's, it's, it's like kind of like a schematic. Yeah. Yeah. But it's um, dynamic. It's um, it's interactive. It's automated. So what you, what you could do is just like, if, if you wanted to put a VR helmet on, this will go to like the, to the, to, to, to the most advanced part of it, but you could um, recreate this studio anywhere else um same equipment where to buy it everything sure the whole company is going to be like that the, every invention every product like um and i want to show people because i was i was having the same issue like i'd explain it and people would say well what if people just steal your ideas and i'm like well that's well, kind of the you're point. not stealing an idea because yeah. everybody's in the local verse so it's meant yes. to be shared and yes. emulated and replicated so, and we'll, we could get back to that a little later on how um, the strategy to prevent what they think is going to happen, but I don't think it's going to happen. Like there's a lot of evidence that I've collected that showed that's not, that's not really the case. But here's the thing. I was, I decided to make a pros and cons list because people kept saying that. I'm like, okay, cons list, steal your idea, whatever. And I couldn't think of any other. So I started making a pros and this is where it, I had some insights that just kind of slapped me in the face of like, so it was so profound that I was just shocked. And like, uh, and, and I started, for example, I started saying, okay, um, I put an invention. And when you do market research, it is frustrating to find out a lot of things like mm -hmm. um, market research is hairy. So you try to find out where you're going to get materials for your invention, um, what, you know, who's going to make it, all sorts of things. And I started thinking, if you have an audience, then they, they they could be your audience and the whole, everything reverses. They come to you instead of you seeking them. The market research reverses. It's actually coming to you, the information, because there's going to be people who know somebody else. Um, right. And this has been proven, like uh, the, the, the connections, I forget, six points of connection. What's that called? There's the bacon. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. I'm yeah, yeah. So there's my tongue, but yeah. Somebody did a, a a TED talk showing that she had like 20 to 50 people in the audience, and no matter what problem somebody came up with, no matter how obscure the information they needed, somebody in the audience was able to get it, and and pretty fast. And nice. that just totally blew me away because I'm like that that just makes this model possible like um, an open model and, and the information comes to you. And, and then if you're dealing with contractors, another one was um, you, they're going to give you the best service. They're in front of an audience, free marketing. I want everybody to see the, you know, what, what my service is. So imagine when you get um, as a company, you're as a business, you're, you're ordering things, you're, you're getting work done. And um and you get the best, you know, mm -hmm. it's now this is obviously has to be tested to see if these, uh, if the premise is correct, but I feel that that's probably sh what should happen. 
It should. I mean, let's let's be real. You just said contractors, right? So I'm heavily heavily connected in that space so on the HVAC side, right? But like my brother-in-law owns uh, Surface Construction. It's a big commercial company here in the Valley. Does they're the, the the big time puppeteers. They don't actually do any of the constructing anymore. Like the company was founded in my old house's garage in the early 1900s by my wife's great grandfather, right? Um, so back then they're building churches and fire departments and they did all the constructing. Now they're so big, they just hire all the other experts, pull them all together and they puppeteer and they, like they built a 12 story glass, like Allentown skyscraper, Allentown skyscraper in downtown Allentown on fifth, <laughs> fifth and uh, Allen, you know, again, ladies and gentlemen, if you live in New York city, that's what we got. 12 stories is a lot for us here in the Valley. Okay. <laughs> just g- give us that. Okay. Can we, can we just say it's a skyscraper? I don't know. Are we all right, Marino? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... Uh, but that was a big deal for them. They had they, they and they didn't have a contact here in the valley with the architectural experience of going over ten plus story commercial construction in the valley. They had to go to Philadelphia, get architectural consultation, then bring that back here, and then for the most part, most of their contractors that they brought together to do the whole job was mostly in the greater Lehigh Valley, and uh, that's. That's a little bit of an example of what you're talking about, right? They now have the years of experience, the years of connections, uh, that if I ever come across a commercial project, I could just call my brother-in-law like, hey, who's your guy for concrete? Do you what, what company do you recommend, right? That w- one degree of separation now, you know, that guy was possibly 10 degrees of separation, but he might give me the direct line. And that's only two, I, I just jumped only two steps away versus 10 steps away because I know a guy who knows a guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, the incentive to, I mean, and I believe there's a natural incentive. People like doing that. People love sharing information. But if there's an added incentive, like you become part of the profit, you know, like um, that will be part of the platform where like everything's traced, all ideas and all suggestions are traced to the people mm-hmm. who, um, you know, from the invention. Back well, the in the sales world. That, that's a, you're, you're tracking the sales lead generation process, right? Where did it start from? Who was involved? And then, for example, outside of your world, in the current world, okay, well, I have a, my 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 largest client is a sales consulting agreement, right? So I I've, I I was her employee many years ago, left, and then she needed my expertise. I now train her people. She's got somebody in New England. So here's an example, right? All of her contracts with ten different factories around this country. She's the sales representation firm. They don't hire salespeople. They hire her company here in Allentown. And her territories on those contracts, she owns all the sales rights to the, all the products that go into the wholesalers that the HVAC contractors shop at. Okay. So that means anything being sold from Delaware to Maine, she gets a piece of that. Then, but in our in her system, she uses Salesforce. It's a very big platform, right? A software as a service. Um we we pay eight years building this thing out. So now any stuff that I work on, I get a piece of her piece. And then if I'm helping her employee land a deal because I'm being traced in that, I get a small piece of his piece of her piece, right? So you want to track that because in the end, we're all working together. You know, it's, she can't do everything herself. She's building out a sales team. Now, everybody else are employees. I'm the independent consultant uh, because that's how I roll. Uh, But in the end, it's, I, I literally have nowadays, I have a 100% commissioned relationship. She pays me a small retainer every month just to keep me interested, but that goes against my commissions. We, I was like, listen, as long as we continue to work, I go meet with all the CEIOs and close deals. And I get a, I get a big chunk or her chunk. And because in the end, I can't win that money if she didn't have the contracts, but she can't make the money if I didn't help close the deals with the executives and yada, yada, yada. Right. So we track all that. Everybody involved is getting a piece. So is that somewhat relating to what you're trying to build out there? It sounds pretty great. Um, however, it's going to be more like a local verse. It's not going to be in the decision process, by the way. But what I have again, you're the platform, right? You're yes. The, you're the, the entity where everything is all that's happening. You know, yeah. So. so the platform is there to do the work, automate things yeah. like that because that could be tedious you know figuring out who did sure. what but what happened is that is for the fans and contributors to figure that out themselves what's fair you know like uh because it's a, a, a you know put it put it into the system that traces it and then okay how much should they get this because they since it's an open system 
you're taking the guesswork out of how profitable it is. It's open. Every yeah. live stream we do, our bank account is right there, front and center, so people can see how much is okay. in the bank. And, and if so, somebody real time refers something, it refers a job or refers a contractor for a potential job, you have evidence right there. Well, it's in the sit. Look at that in local verse. Yes. That person suggested that job and that contractor. So there's technically yep. a sales relationship. Yes. Right. Like uh, now, there's not going to be any rights involved, uh, except maybe for like Creative Commons types. But the yeah. idea is here that we're entering like an exponential phase of technology that's going to really be so transformative. It's going to disrupt a lot of things. And I did a lot of thinking, had to like think about first principles thinking. And it comes down to like, what what if you, you imagine situations in your head? So people mm -hmm. are talking about robots taking jobs. So I'm like, okay, what would happen if if we if robots became so good that they took everyone's jobs? Like uh well, then you have to think. Well, who's going to fix the robots? Well, right? who's going to upgrade say, the robots? Let's say robots could fix themselves. And I think that's not out of, okay. you know, out of that's a good point, right? Robots could be designed to fix the other robots. That's a good point. It can automate all that too. Because yeah. AI is really just mind automation. Like uh, the other tools we have, technology is just manual automation. Like, um, but that's, you know, it's all automation. Yeah. And my point is, how does a system work now? And this is how it works. I'm, I just came from a job. I'm getting a paycheck. I'm going to use that to spend at businesses, food, all sorts of things, car and whatever. So this is what keeps the economy going. If, if, if we're not going to work, we're not getting paychecks, we're not spending it at businesses. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing robots to replace the workers, now you're not going to pay the robots. Right. They're not going to go shopping. You're interrupting the, the cash flow. Yeah, the whole right. thing falls apart. I, like, I, yeah, uh, let's pause. Let's pause on that. I, and again, ladies and gentlemen, you know the history of this show. I don't get political, and I don't talk religion. It's just, it's just so exhausting. I, I don't do it. But let's talk about reality. And we're, I think Marino and I are going to align right now. What he just talked about during the COVID pandemic transition of the past two to three years, people weren't working as much as they were, or they were on the the government check. Uh, thing, which again, as a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, that money's not free. Your tax dollars will have to pay for all of that, or I, we're already paying for that now. Um, and the government checks that I got, even though I'm an independent consultant, they, they like they gave me a PPP loan opportunity, all that type of stuff. If if I got a check from the IRS, I actually donated it because I didn't stop working. Okay, like the that little six hundred dollar check or whatever that was being sent around. I'm like. Okay. Now, granted, some families that helped a lot of people. Okay. But for the large majority of people who are working, they kept working because I can make that $600 in 30 minutes. I don't need your little, your little stipend check thingy. And again, did it really motivate somebody to go get a job? No, because I had free money coming, right? So I could, I could, I don't want to, some people don't like this, but I, I get edgy, right? I'm a business professional it might've enabled some possible laziness in a certain percentage of the population, which we're still seeing remnants of today. Am I off on that at all? I don't know. What are your thoughts, Maria? <laughs> well, I think, let me just say, I'm on the same, similar, same wavelength on that. Yeah, we don't have to directly thing. align, but it's, it's like a healthy concern. I'll have a healthy concern and a healthy debate of, Robots can't make that money and then spend it, like you just said, into the markets. And that's where I was going with this is small businesses is actually what builds the economy, yes. not large corporations. Okay. Absolutely. The billion, everybody's complaining about, oh, these billion dollar companies don't pay enough taxes, yada, yada, yada. Okay. But in the end, what's the frontline employee of that billion, billion, billion dollar company? The frontline employees are the ones collecting the paycheck, going to the bank, Get, then checking their budgets for groceries, uh, cleaning services, fixing the cars, you know, going to the local, like my wife's vehicle right now, she's in Croatia on vacation with a girlfriend. Her vehicle has 280 some thousand miles on it. We like to milk the crap out of our vehicles because we don't like debt. Um, so she's trying to, they're, they're trying to get it to pass inspection because it's a great vehicle. But if she has to, she will have to retire that vehicle. Now go shop locally for another vehicle. Uh, because she's a uh, horse farm veterinarian and she needs transportation. 
but she's, she goes, she prefers the local small garage. We don't do some big dealership thing for her vehicles, right? She's supporting local. But if she stops working, she doesn't have a business to run. She doesn't have the money to fix the car. And then the garage is not making money off of the repairs of her vehicle, which, you know, and all of this stuff cascades out of control. And you wonder why we have problems. People have to work. They have to make money and they have to stimulate the economy. And that's what small businesses, especially locally, are doing. So you and I are definitely in alignment on that. <laughs> well, we're definitely, what I was going to say, I guess, was an alignment, at least with the no political and religion uh, discussions and because yeah. they do derail things. But you did bring up something important. I, I want to say that I'm thinking ahead. We want, Locoverse wants as a first major milestone goal is to um, to help boost the world to a billion founders and owners. Nice. And not just businesses, but just like something, you know, like uh, whether yeah. it's a nonprofit, or whatever. Like, um, and the whole thing is because yes, like local is the lifeblood of like the economy. And, um, but, but I want people to understand why, you know, like uh, I, I, I'm, I'm very um, obsessive compulsive about like, um, finding the mechanism of things, you know, like why mm -hmm. do things work? Like how are things going to end up, you know, like, like real mechanisms that you could follow all the way to the end. So for example, you remind um, me of an engineering buddy of mine. He's, <laughs> he talks just like you. He's very, he's, he's a classic mechanical engineer. Like everything has to be taken apart and rebuilt back in. And then he fully, he's very, he calls it mechanically minded. <laughs> I don't know if you would agree with that, but he, he can, take something apart in his head and put it all back together again. And yeah, he, he, he just sounds just like him. I've known this guy for 20 years. <laughs> I, I really, thanks. Thanks for that. That's a really big compliment, but I'm very currently still awful with technology, like, uh, like setting up um, things, but I yeah, but do, I'm hearing the passionate in from you. That's the cool thing. Like, like you just said, you want to figure that out, right? Yeah. That's when you know you're passionate about something. I mean, passion takes it, takes you those next steps. And if you don't understand everything yet, you're figuring it out or you're going to yeah. find the people in the local yes. verse to figure it out. Open collaboration, baby. Yeah. So, so I found a mechanic that just blew my mind. Like uh, I was messing around on a, on a whiteboard. I don't have one with me. So uh, maybe we could use our imagination here. Yeah. Uh, I came up with three people, let's say Lisa, Bob and Pedro, and each one sells something locally. Um, We'll just say one, two, three, because uh, so I don't get tripped up on who's who. Sure. But number one sells um, eggs and cheese. You know, they they, they have animals. The uh, other one mows lawns and the other one, uh, let's say garden veggies. And let's say you you start with, they only have one $20 bill between them. First person uh, pays the second, you know, they get the service done or they, 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 they sold the veggies or the uh, eggs and uh, cheese. And mm -hmm. then... Uh, and then the other one, the, the the lawn mowing. So they now it goes to the third person and who goes back to the first, and then it just keeps going round and round. And I noticed like, okay, let's let's stretch that to five years. That'll be about 250 weeks, a little it a little a little more than that, to be honest. But what that means is with that one twenty dollar bill. One twenty dollar bill. You just got two hundred fifty weeks worth of eggs and cheese, two hundred fifty lawn mowings, and two hundred fifty uh, um, vegetables or vegetables. You know, yes, yeah. and that just like blew me away. Like because I was just like, it's the same twenty dollar bill, one twenty dollar bill, and I was like, and they're still making money, yeah. you know, like uh, from other sources, and there is why local buying local the very you know why it makes the economy powerful locally the mo money just keeps being reused well, and then back to your point yeah we're talking local but again this now scales outward like everybody has local communities because everybody's got local businesses so like to your point right it's just this gets emulated and replicated with the same consistent footprints everywhere like yeah. it's funny because like i'm, I'm flashing back to I was a history buff for many years and this is the classic. Okay. All right. Before we just, cause I, here's the, all the most successful financial people out there will tell you, once you get a clue about quote money, it is not real. Like money's not real. It is a way to tender a, you know, a value, right? So before 
currency was invented and, and all this stuff, it was bartering. You like go, go back to medieval times, right? You see these old medieval movies, Robin Hood movies, right? You have these little villages outside the, the glorious castle. But what are everybody doing? Like, oh, I'm going to trade you bread for your eggs and you're going to trade uh, – now that bread I could trade, you know, for this, it, it, people were just swapping. Like there's the, there's the bread guru, like you said, the egg guru, the veggie guru, uh, there's, there's the blacksmith, <laughs> uh, you know, and, but they were trading. That was a form of currency before they invented, oh, gold coins and yada, yada, yada. Right. But you're just reminding people, like you're just taking a big chunk out of the history and just doing things at a much different level virtually online and everywhere oh, else. Oh, yeah, absolutely yeah. right. I mean, that's that's a great point. I mean, and and that, yeah, bartering. Yeah, I mean, right? That's that, that, that was that. before money existed. That's what you did. Like, okay, what am I good at? I'm the blacksmith. Well, I don't know how to raise eggs and chickens and all that. And I don't know how to, I don't have room for the garden, but I can I can hammer that steel and fix those ho those horseshoes for you. So here, I'll I'll fix your horseshoes on your farm horse that you're plowing the fields with, you just, you just pay me in some vegetables or whatever, right? It's rotation, right? So well, let's, money. let's get to the heart of the issue here. Like, yeah. um, because we are striving for this, like, and I love your trifecta of uh, financial independence, um, location independence, time and time freedom. Yeah. The one that that's the one thing we're all lacking. Oh, like, and everybody wants it. Like, everybody yeah. wants it. <laughs> yeah. But so I kind of, I I like the I, I'm I'm taking two of those like I, I we already have the financial independence at time and I'm changing location to local independence. Nice. Like uh, I don't know exactly what you meant by location independence, but I think that the means freedom to travel, to freedom to okay. work any freedom to work anywhere. Right. It's it's, it's exactly what you're doing. What does it mean to you? Okay, For me, great. originally, it was, I want to be able to work anywhere, like right here in my home studio, take my laptop. I was working in my hotel in Austin, Texas last weekend at that conference, right? I could choose to work when I want, where I want. That's the, those part of those freedoms. And then if you're doing everything right, the money component should always be there if you're smart, right? You don't carry tons of debt you're, or whatever, you are using debt to your advantage. There's, there's tricks to that whole different podcast. <laughs> but again, <laughs> right? It's like, I want the freedom to make the money the way I want to make it, do it in the location that I want to do it in and make sure that I have time to say, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to take the rest of the day off and go hike a mountain or go mountain biking, right? That, that's just an example of how I put it all together back in the day. So, um, well. I want to um, add to that a personal independence. You Please know, do. Like, um, and and what it, this is a reason we have everyone powerful as like the vision. Like, uh, what does that mean exactly? It means those four independences, like mm -hmm. uh, widespread, universal. And and we're going to, I'm glad you said like the no politics, no thing, because we aim to leapfrog over these things. Like- um, That's exciting. Like, like, like we, we want, we, you, we got a question, why do we even work? Like um, we work because we got born in a situation where like, hey, you got to spend energy to do this. And mm -hmm. by the way, that's what I think in bartering or even with money, we're trading energy and time. Like I put this much energy and time into this and, yeah. uh, and you What's put its that value? much time and yeah. energy and we're trading. Yeah. Like, um, however, if we have independence of it, then we get to a point where we almost don't even have to we're self-sufficient locally like uh well to your point if local verse helps automate those relationships yes. it's like okay well now you're not splitting hairs or freaking out about your budgets right because everything is cyclical everything is flowing i'm, I'm vibing off of you you know it's like okay I, now i'm not killing myself staying up until 10 o'clock at night running a, a running my marketing uh analytics that you said is so much fun to do trust me as a marketing professional it's not fun for a lot of people um crunching numbers and figuring out where your budget's at for the next month's ad spend or whatever you're doing, right? It's like, well, if the, if, if the services are flowing and the cash is flowing, like I, I tell people this on, on business growth, right? It's like, are you working on your business or in your business? A lot of people use that statement and quote out there in the online space. Now, if you're an online coach or a guru, whatever, it's like, okay, but it's true. It's like, okay, you should have the freedom to now work on your business and not in your business because everything is cranking and flowing and to your point, right now, everybody is thriving together and they're now running their businesses more inspired, more happily, 
getting that time freedom, getting that financial freedom, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the word like I do like the concept of working together, but I I want it to be like kind of like a like a nice um, topic. I liked your table. word collaboration. I yes. thought that was fun. Open collaboration, the, yeah. the cross pollination. That's what's the oh, title yeah. Yeah. because people do like helping people. I woke and, up this morning to let the dog out and there was bees right there. And I was like, it popped in my <laughs> head. I was like, first thing I saw this morning was bees. I was like, oh, pollinating. Like, I don't look at them as they're evil. I'm like, oh, look at that. You're pollinating some flowers. Of you, you do you. <laughs> so I want to ask people to, you know, everyday people to like, um, kind of like a hard, um, to accept, to, re to rethink. That's maybe the word I'm looking for, to rethink something. Like a lot, a lot of us are concerned about automation, um, taking our jobs and everything. I'm like, but we should actually, if we have locally made automation, locally made robotics and AI open, you know, like that and, and cross pollinating that we could, we could welcome automation to take our chores, you know, to take our things so we could really do what we love sure. to, do, to do. Like uh, even a lot of our businesses are in some way um, structured to keep us from ending up in the gutter or losing our house. It's all about loss prevention. We're trying to like prevent us losing our house, our sure. transportation, our, what we've built. And that's because we were born in a world of scarcity. Like we, um, and yes, inspiration does not come out of uh, living and working in fear. The fear yeah. of loss. It's very hard to flip the switch back to inspiration. It does not align. Yes. So. And what if we could get to a world where it's like abundance, you yes. know, like um, abundance, connection. And oh, yeah. There's choice. an old podcasting buddy of mine. I think his group is the abundant mindset, but he's, yeah. he's a big and his his niche. Again, ladies have these groups too, but uh, it's, it's an all men's entrepreneur community that I'm in. But he's like, he's every single day, every single week. He's like, guys, like, get out of that negative mindset, that scarcity mindset. He's like, growth can only happen if you're, if you're staying or getting yourself, you can't always stay. You're like, we're all human, but getting back into that mindset of abundance uh, that helps you get over these hurdles. And this is, this is hard for a lot of people personally and professionally. So I agree. I f fully align with you on that. Oh yeah. I'm deep. I'm knee deep in it. I mean, <laughs> this, this is why I was like the last four days. I, I was just like work, sleep, work, sleep. Like, uh, you know, I mean, you gotta break, you gotta break yeah. it. Yeah. And it's hot. Like we're working in like really <laughs> hot weather out there and it's, uh, yeah, I don't want it. I mean, I love doing concert work, but setting up stages, but at the same time, I'm like, I want to do local verse, not that. Yeah. Well, I again, mean, more than that. My entrepreneurial journey, it, it wasn't easy. And yeah, I, I tell people all the time, like, Start with the side hustle. It's way less stressful. You start doing it on your free time and yeah. then you start making the mistakes, but the mistakes aren't so detrimental that it shuts everything down in your life. And now you're back in that scarcity mindset. You start building it, right? The most successful people like Warren Buffett, these big, big uh, successful people, you talk to any millionaire and billionaire, you sit down and just hang out with a couple of them. I've got, in mean, recent years, I've got to hang with a couple just at a confer or conferences or whatever, or mastermind events. And they don't talk. And we're approaching the end of the show. This is a fun transition for you to help uh, get uh, people to get inspired to follow you too. But I know you'll, you'll agree with this or at least connect me on this. They don't talk about their successes. It's interesting. They talk about their biggest failures or the biggest challenges of the, the latest company they had to fold or they had to reinvent it and go a different route or product failure or an invention failure. But then that, because that invention failed, it triggered this success. And that's the cool thing when you, you got, when people are playing at that level, cause they've put in the reps and they've made those mistakes. They know that that's where all the powerful change happens. You have to put in the reps. You have to start making some mistakes along with the successes. That's where the powerful growth and change happens at. So back to your point on local verse, like I'm glad you still got your, your primary hustle because local verse now you got time to test things and poke and prod and see what's working and not working oh you know what then ended up not working okay no worries cool now we know that we don't want that let's do this stuff like that so welcome to trial and error that's there what it is you but a lot of people are afraid of the air 
<laughs> and I, I was too many years ago. And it's like, you know what, Scott, sooner or later, if you want to change your life, you got to start putting the reps and you're, you're going to have a bad rep once in a while. All right. It is what it is that you go back to the drawing board, refocus, work on your form, your technique, and then go at it again, or go a different route, change directions, all that. So, yeah, yeah. it's your habits of thinking. It is. So, so we are, we are, I have another show coming up here. So I, yeah. I don't want to, uh, this is, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot, he's got a lot to come. All right. And we'll, we'll, we'll have you back on the show. Don't worry about that. Uh, but I want to make sure we uh, get people towards the end of the show here, because like, again, one of the things you would send me a bullet point was, you know, you talk about automation, right? Moving homeward, uh, sparking that local renaissance, stuff like that. But I liked your little statement you had sent me where then you're, then you're in a good company, right? You're in those people, those are the people you want to be around, right? So and you want people to contact you. If this, if this show moved you as a listener and you might be vibing with what Marino's laying out there for local verse, I'm guessing you're probably looking people to help grow that tribe, right? Absolutely. Growing the tribe. Yeah. yeah. So, so what do you, so what, what would be your call to action for them uh, that are hearing this? So I'm not savvy enough to have a website yet. I'm getting there. That's that but... takes time. That's fine. I know you got the Facebook in the in world, you know. Yeah. So it's a big platform. Com, yeah. Facebook.com slash localverse. Um or my personal phone number, you know, like uh, or my yes, I think I have a business number, but my personal phone number is uh four eight four six nine five five six six nine. You can call me. And uh, or text. Text would be better. So how many people she- give out their phone number for you to actually call them nowadays, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's it, pretty open for your sourcing. Yeah. <laughs> I had to go there. I, had to I would say that. text me so I know that, so I know you're not a, you know, marketer. Like yeah, that. that helps. That helps. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, he did at least, again, he's, dude, we're talking early stages, but there's a lot of stuff happening for him. So here, check it out. Again, I'm on the Facebook. Uh, Local Verse is up online. It is, a, he's got a new page up. It's Local Verse, all one word, too. Uh, if you don't remember the address, just search local, L O L O C A L V E R S E, all one word, and that'll take you right to the page where you can like, follow, all of that. And, uh, and then eventually, now you did secure a domain. So when you do get the website up, is that going to be the localverse.fan? Dot fan, yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. So there you go. He's already, he's, t- I already found the domain. He's already hustling there, too. So, and uh, here's a little tip. Online people listening to this, because I'm, 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 Maria, I'm going to tell you to do that right now. Go into your domain host where you bought your, reg- you registered the domain app and do a domain repoint and just point it at the Facebook page. So now ah. your Facebook page becomes your temporary website. So now you just tell people, hey guys, moving forward, always just tell, hey, just go to localverse.fm. Oh, it takes man, you to the Facebook great. page. Thanks, yeah. Scott. That's, uh, yeah, two heads work better. That's than a big one. hack, right. my buddy. <laughs> My buddy, I rebranded his whole company. He's a local uh, home improvement guru. Shout out to Strausser Home Improvements, Brian Strausser. He and I mountain bike run chainsaws together. Uh, he's on the board of my charity that I founded. Uh, but he's like, you know, I don't want a website. He's like, most of his business off of your concept has been thanks to that app called Nextdoor. Okay. So I guess that Nextdoor app has given him so much business. He's crushing it. And then he's like, yeah, I don't want to spend money on the website. He's like, here. I was like, here, then we'll just take StraussersHomeImprovements.com. You it just goes to his Facebook page. That's it. And so Facebook is, is his website. So this is an example of that open collaboration. There you go. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. Uh, I like to leave a few nuggets because uh, everybody starts stressing out about online, this and all like that. I'm like, I get it. That's what I do. But I tell people like, in the meantime, you don't even know what your website wants to even look like. Where's the budget at? Where's the funding? If Facebook is free, okay? Heck, you could do it with your LinkedIn page. Any online address that can be publicly typed in and entered you can go in your domain registrar and just point your domain at that. So if you want localverse.fan to go to your LinkedIn page, do that instead. You want to go to your Facebook page. You want to go to your Instagram. It doesn't matter. And that's just a temporary thing. You set that up. And then once the website is ready to be built and launched, then you just go back into your domain registrar and repoint it at the new website. And <laughs> so that's awesome. There you go. That, that's some free consultation, people. That'd be a funny thing is I don't think it's really that big a deal, but you'd be surprised how many people don't know that. And I learned that many years ago and I always get like a reaction like you got. I'm like, yeah, I got <laughs> my own younger brother. I'm, I'm actually, he finally was listening to me because uh, he lives about an hour west of here. He's never had an online website. I'm like, Matt, can I at least help you exist? I was like, I mean, I'm a little busy right now, but I'll, I'll, I was like, can I at least, I was like, 
buy your domain. Now he's got the nice professional email address too. I rebranded his business card for him. And that's not even stuff I normally do, but it's my brother. And, and then I pointed the domain at his Facebook page. He's like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. I'm like, yeah, that's it. He's like, oh. Oh, I knew it's just yeah. like I needed a reminder. Just needed a poke. <laughs> that's it. I, so. I just didn't even think of it. Well, listen, so, hang tight, hang tight, Marino. Uh, I'm gonna give you a proper goodbye off the air because uh, okay. I got five minutes to get ready for another show, ladies and gentlemen. FYI, real quick, we're doing this on a Saturday. All right, see, Marino's hustling, Jason's hustling with the hosting of the studio there. I'm hustling because it's Saturday, and I, I don't know, I probably should be out mountain biking, but I fell at <laughs> podcasting, and that's why we're hanging out today. So, ladies and gentlemen, remember, we're here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. So, go to localverse.fan. Go search for Local Verse on Facebook, like, follow. He gave you the phone number. Reach out to him if this inspires you and you want to help figure this out and be a part of his founding tribe. So anyway, I got to get to another show. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, you too can live the fuel. And we'll talk to you guys again soon.